Good Monday morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for Monday mornings at Maine online edition. My name is Heather Miller. I am an adult programming librarian here at the La Crosse Public Library. And today we have a very special guest with us. We have Nancy Miller, who is going to teach us on how to practice gratitude for the holidays. So thank you so much for joining us today, Nancy. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Gratitude is one of my best um, exercises I give my clients when they come in to see me and I want to help share that gratitude with you guys and learn how to be more grateful. We've got a lot of negative things going on in this world today. We've got COVID, we've got all the results of the election. There's so many things that we could sit and get caught up with, but I want to teach you a little bit about how gratitude can shift our thoughts and help us to feel better all around. So I'm gonna start with, um, just to tell you what we found for definition of gratitude. What is gratitude? Quality of being thankful, readiness to show appreciation for and return kindness. I found that in the Oxford Dictionary. Another, the Merriam-Webster Dictionary um, explains gratitude as a state of being grateful, thankfulness. Again, we hear that word thankful. How often do we forget about being thankful for the things we do have? Gratitude is the expression of appreciation for what one has. I like this um, uh, definition because it has a recognition of value independent of monetary worth. Spon spontaneously generated from within, it is an affirmation of goodness and warmth. And of course, that comes from my friends at Psychology Today. And because I am a therapist, one of those things is it really is about an emotion. Um, what I want to do next is I want to talk about um, becoming more aware of what's really worth your energy. So we would like to, if you could, if you have a piece of paper and a pencil, if you don't, I just want you to spend some time thinking about what or who you are grateful for. Uh, I wrote down some prompts for you to see, um, describe a a family tradition that you are most grateful for? Who is one friend you can always rely on? Who made you smile in the last 24 hours and why? And how is your life more positive today than it was a year ago? I want you to, I'm gonna give you about three to five minutes just to jot it down. Don't think too hard, but just jot down things you're grateful for. Sometimes it's hard to find things that we're grateful for. Um, but just imagine for a moment what it would be like to be in a world where we're grateful. Oftentimes we can get pulled in by the things of COVID or the election or just really struggles that we're having in everyday life. One of the things I ask my clients to do on their first session is, first of all, I say to them, you are not your anxiety. You are not your depression. You are not your trauma. You're still Sally who struggles with those. And what that does is it helps my clients pull away and see themselves from a detached perspective and not so consumed by their trauma, anxiety, or depression. And then I ask them to spend the next week identifying three things they are grateful for. I have to tell you a story about one of my clients he was in his 60s and he came to me and one of his one of the things that he was grateful for was that his dog went outside to go to the bathroom. And he looked at me and he said, I bet you think that's kind of weird. And so I asked him to tell me why it was so he was so grateful for that. And he said to me, it's because we've been bottle feeding him for so long that he finally was able to go to the bathroom, which was very great. He was very grateful for that. So we don't know, my gratitude um, notes are different than yours. Anything goes when we're thinking about gratefulness. So does anybody feel brave enough to share? Sandy shared in the chat that she's grateful for her sister who is always just a phone call away, always and anytime. Nice, thank you, yeah. How about others? You know, as much as I want to touch and hug my granddaughter, I can't do that right now. I haven't seen her since October, but 
seeing her on the portal and allowing her to watch her do fish lips and talk on the portal has been what I've been grateful for because without social media, without Facebook or without the ability for technology, I may not be able to see her physically, but at least I get to see her. So I'm grateful for that. I could share. Okay, thank you. My name is Nancy and I recently made a fast decision to sell my home at 39 years and move to an apartment. And I was going to tell my nieces and nephews and a few friends said, don't tell them. They come and stay so often, they'll be so sad. They'll try to talk you out of it. And I said, not my relatives. And when I did that, they all were very, very encouraging, wrote me little notes of good memories and said, go for it. So I did. <laughs> so. Nice job. How do you feel about doing that? Um, real good. It's been a couple of weeks now. It's getting easier. And I love the people who bought my home. So that made oh. it easier. Oh, but cool. I, I tell everyone, start decrapping now. I was there too long and had too much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to decrap my own house too, Nancy. Good, good, good. <laughs> Any other brave souls out there? Well, let's go on to the next slide where we're going to be um, assessing our gratitude. I'm going to read these off. And as you notice, put one if you strongly disagree, two if you disagree, three if you slightly disagree, four if you're basically neutral, five if you slightly agree, six if you agree, and seven if you strongly agree. But I like this little quote on my screen here. It says, gratitude doesn't change the scenery. It merely washes clean the glass you look through so you can clearly see the colors, right? Oftentimes, um, gratitude opens up a big world. That's what I say to my clients. Why do you think that I ask them to look at things that are grateful for? Because oftentimes when we're in our anxiety, our depression, our COVID, whatever we're experiencing, we're all in a tunnel vision. But gratitude helps us to see a bigger world outside of that. And that's what I love about gratitude. So let's go through this assessment, six questions. So I have so much in life to be thankful for. If I had to list everything that I felt grateful for, it would be a, or yeah, I felt grateful for, it would be a very long list. When I look at the world, I don't see much to be grateful for. Oops, sorry about that, I gotta go back. I am grateful for to a wide variety of people. As I get older, I find myself more able to appreciate the people and events and situations that have been a part of my life history. Long amounts of time can go by before I feel grateful to something or someone. If you add up your score, the higher the score, the more grateful you are. Now, three and six are opposite. So if you put, I don't see much to be grateful for and you strongly disagree, that is a seven instead of a one. They're inverted, so it's three and six, if that makes sense. But again, just for your own personal way of saying, how really, how grateful am I? A grateful heart is a magnet for miracles. Gratitude is a choice, it's an emotion, but it gives us the ability to show us what we have to be grateful for. If we didn't have gratitude, we wouldn't be able to stop and think about all that we have, grateful, be, we have to be grateful for. By giving, we see our resources and in sharing our resources, we give others hope. I was trying to think about something about how do I position myself for gratitude? 
it was a very, you know, I'm trying to think, how do I do that? Because I'm always about, if I'm a grateful person, that gratefulness will just spread and I don't have to work hard at it. And I'm trying to think about that. And it's like, if I share myself, if I'm a grateful person and I find myself being grateful, people see me and are attracted. They're that magnet for miracles. They are attracted to people that are grateful. I don't know about you, but if you're with people that kind of are negative Nellies or their, their glasses have empty, it certainly is draining of my energy. But when I'm with people that can see light or have a glass that's half full or are very grateful, I want to latch on to them and I want them, I want to connect with them in a deeper way. Dr. Guy Winch says that gratitude is an emotion that grounds us and is a great way to balance out the negative mindset that uncertainty engenders. We are living in an uncertainty, uncertain world right now, aren't we guys? We don't know what's happening. We don't know when the vaccine is going to come. There's hope here, but we have to live in this place of uncertainty. All, most of my clients come in and say, I don't like sitting in the unknown. I don't like this world of uncertainty, but that's where we're at. What if we looked at gratitude as the emotion that grounds us and is a great way to balance out our negative mindset? How would our life be different? Dr. Robert Emmons says, when we take time to focus on what we are grateful for, we choose positive emotions over negative. Thus, we take steps to nurture our mental health and well being. We take steps to nurture our mental health and well being, right? Instead of draining our energy, we're increasing our energy. Cultivating gratitude takes effort, but pays off with profound effects on our health and happiness. And the best part of it all is gratitude helps people sleep better. I'm grateful for that because I need to sleep better sometimes. But when we go to bed in a place of fear or uncertainty, sometimes it's difficult for us to get a good night's sleep. But when that's why I think too, the other piece of this, and we'll get into how we do gratitude journals and things like that. But if we use those gratitude journals to help us at the end of the night to be grateful for the things that we see, it's going to help us sleep better because it's going to help us focus differently on where we're at in our life. And then we can actually sleep together, sleep better because I'll tell you, a lot of people think anxiety just goes around in their minds right before they sleep. And so I ask them about their gratitude. How have you been grateful for today? And they go, oh, I forgot about my gratitude. But when they reinst reinstate that practice of gratitude, they're able, better able to sleep better. So that's a grateful that's a great practice to try for all of us as we try to sleep better during these times of uncertainty. So what good is great gratitude? Reasons why. Grateful people on the average give 20% more time in dollars. I don't know about you, but when I give time, like I'm giving my time today, it really boosts my my own gratitude. I have the ability to help people and um, share with you what I know about gratitude, and that just boosts my own ability to give back to the community. Um, gratitude is related to age. For every 10 years, gratitude increases by 5%. Isn't that interesting? As we age, we're better, we're more grateful. We become to look and see what we've had and we're grateful for it. Grateful people will have a stronger bond with the local community. You'll see people out there volunteering and, and helping whether monetarily or with their time. Grateful people have 10% fewer stress-related illnesses. They're more physically fit. They have blood pressure is lower by 12%. They want to care for themselves. They're grateful. They want their bodies to be um, um, well-oiled machines to help them um, age well. Happy people's income is roughly increased 7%. That's an in interesting thought as well. Um, uh, gratitude, more satisfying relationships with others and will be better liked. Again, when we're positioned for gratitude, if we have a place of gratitude, more people are going to want what we have. And we can say we're grateful people. For you, 13% fewer fights, 20% more likely to get A grades. Okay, and I thought this was interesting too. The most grateful countries are South Africa, Philippines, and India, and I don't know what UAE stands for, sorry. Um, overall, positive emotions can add up to seven years to your life. 
Um, the least grateful areas are the Netherlands, Denmark, Hungary, Czech Republic, and the United Kingdom. And this one's interesting as well. Grateful teens are less likely to start smoking. How do we position ourselves as parents for gratitude so that we then, by being grateful, can pass that down to our children? One of the ways I say that, I use that for my clients as well is around the dinner table. What are three things you're grateful for? Or what are things that happened that you and um, that were good for today? What, what things have you noticed that really went well for you today? And what ones didn't go so well? So that we can talk about how to um, continue to focus on gratitude despite some things that don't go well. Oftentimes, we look at one incident that hasn't gone well. Maybe that incident happened and it lasted five minutes. And yet that one incident can drain the whole day. Why not give it the five minutes or even 10 or 15 minutes of feeling kind of icky that it happened? But let's switch it around and, and switch back to gratitude so that we can not let the whole day be drained, but maybe just 10 or 15 minutes of that day. It's not happiness that brings us gratitude. It's, it is gratitude that brings us happiness. And I had to bring this little guy in here with it. I wanna show, it's, I think it's a, I wanna think it's a five minute video, but it really speaks to gratitude. And so I hope you enjoy it. Let's try it again. Sometimes in life, we pass over the simple beauties that surround us and shift our focus to the things that chip away at our spirits. Gratitude is a funny thing. When we take life for granted and fail to show gratitude, our fearful minds let our ego take control. A couple days back, I came across a story about a young woman traveling down the street. She came across a man begging for money on the side of the road. When she looked down, she saw an empty bowl next to him and a cardboard sign that said, blind, please help. As she looked up around the busy, crowded streets of downtown, she noticed that nobody was helping him. So she decided to take action into her own hands. She took a pen out of her pocket, grabbed the cardboard sign, flipped it over, and wrote a message down. The blind man could hear somebody writing something on his cardboard, but he was curious, so he let her continue. She finished writing the message, put the sign back and threw some change in the bowl and then walked away. To the blind man's surprise, he heard more change in money filling his bowl. Curious of what the sign said, he pulled a man aside and asked him to read the sign. The man looked down and said, today is a beautiful day and I'm so happy you have the privilege to be able to see it. See, gratitude is a funny thing. We spend our lives focused on things that we can't control. We pay attention to the chaotic world around us that is draining our spirit. After reading that story, the next morning I woke up, went to the front window to see the sun coming up over the horizon and just paused and took it all in. This is an incredible gift we have. This thing called life. Don't continue to let stressful things pull you away from who you truly can become. Life has some incredible messages. And one I'd like to share with you is, it's not happiness that brings us gratitude. It's gratitude that brings us happiness. Okay, let's go on then. So again, it's not, it is not happiness that brings us gratitude, it's gratitude that brings us happiness. So how do we cultivate this thing called gratitude? How do we do that? How do we position ourselves for gratitude? 
Sometimes we can use what's called gratitude journaling. That's one of the things I give my clients every day. And the first session is write three things down that you're grateful for, and they can't be the same. What I'm hoping that by giving them this assignment that they're gonna look beyond their problems and see what they're truly grateful for. Um, and I always tell them that they can't use the same one each day. Um, and that's always interesting to hear them say, oh, but I have to think of three new ones every day. Yep. And that again, just kind of expands and broadens their horizon to think about gratitude. Gratitude mapping is a place where they just put different things they're grateful for on a bulletin board, on their mirror, or um, wherever else they can find um, that will be helpful. I have someone that brings it on their desk, puts it on their desk, uh, by their desk for those um, I, options to be able to be grateful for. I have a client that uses a jar with marbles and she writes down when she's grateful and she adds a marble every time she thinks of something she's grateful for because she needs a full jar of marbles to be able to do the work she does. Because um, when she runs out of marbles, she necess she almost really just runs out of energy to help people. We have to be filled up with gratitude and self-care in order for us to give out to other people. I, as a therapist, I can't give what I don't have. And so being grateful for me helps me replenish that inner strength I need to serve the people that I serve in my, in my office daily. Um, gratitude jar. Um, I'm gonna show you a little bit about what that looks like um, and just different things you can put into your gratitude jar. Some people like to call it a blessings jar. Um, many ways to do that, you know, you can do that very many different ways. I, I'll show you a little bit about that. Morning meditation. Sometimes people will do um, just sit and meditate for a while about what has been good in their life. If we stopped and got quiet and recognized all the good we had in our life, how could we not be grateful? Prayer. A lot of Christians around the world and other religions will focus on prayer. Um, as a means to remem remember the strength that's beyond their own ability. And volunteering. Some of the things that I hear moms do of adolescence is, I'm just going to get them out to volunteer, and then they're going to realize just how much they really do have when they think of adolescence. Oftentimes, adolescents are in that season of entitlement. And so moms and dads want them to um, see what it's like to be out and volunteer so that they can recognize just how much they really do have and that maybe, just maybe, they don't have to be falling into the entitlement stage or I want all the new toys or technologies, things like that. But volunteering is a good way to recenter ourselves on what we do have and what we have to be grateful for. So here's a gratitude journal. Um, there's many different ways to do it. Um, you can go, Google on um, Amazon and find a gratitude journal. You can make your own gratitude journal, um, but you wanna select one um, that jumps out at you, one that really speaks to you. Um, you can decorate one, you can get a piece of paper and decorate a piece of paper and make it that way. Whatever you feel like is important to you. Again, hey, do you mind, sorry, sharing your screen again? We're still seeing the YouTube video. Oh, really? I'm sorry. That's okay. Okay, let me share the screen again. Oh, here we go. How about that? Perfect. All right. So the gratitude journal. Again, you can go on Amazon and find one, or you can find one um, that you can make on your own. Look at the one on the bottom left. They had, it looks like index cards and they decorated index cards and they have them kind of put together with a ribbon. That's one way they can do it as well. But the big thing is, um, creating a ritual um, about when are you going to write about in this journal, a specific time during the day, maybe a place during the day. Remember back, I talked about having um, uh, having you do it like at night as a way to kind of end your day. This is what I was grateful for. And then as you wake up in the morning, remember what you were grateful for the night before. Kind of just carry it from day to day. Um, the other thing, the next step is to kind of spend some time getting quiet. That's a hard thing for us today when we're in the rush, rush of this world. 
spend some time getting quiet and focusing what, who you are truly thankful for. Don't rush this process. And as things come up, write three things down that you're grateful for. And then pause and focus. What's going on inside about what, how it feels to be truly grateful. And next, celebrate quality. Dive deep into those things you are grateful for. Even those little things. People will say, well, I did this. And they say, but it's not a big deal. No, it is a big deal. When you're grateful for something, it is a big deal. Don't negate the little steps you take. That's going to help reinforce that, that stance of gratitude. And then, I, like I said earlier, bookend your day. Gratitude in the morning, re reinforced in the evening, or vice versa. So those are ways to make a gratitude journal. Simple as writing. I have like little index cards all over my house in different ways. I have different journals. Just time to say, this is what I'm grateful for. Some people are very intentional. We'll use one book. Hmm, I'm not. I go all over the place with different pieces of paper and different um, journals and things like that because I want to stop. My phone has things that I'm grateful for too. When I stop and go, wait a minute, I'm really grateful. Hmm. Gratitude jar. There's different ways to do the gratitude jar. If you see in the middle, there's a little kid's gratitude jar in the, in the bottom right. It's a very basic one. Find a, a jar and decorate it. Personalize it to your liking. This is something that you're going to hold the very treasures of gratitude in. Each day, add three gratitude statements. I am grateful for dot, dot, dot. Find creative ways to discuss these gratitude statements, perhaps around the dinner table or during a bedtime routine if you want to involve your family. Another way to do that is in the new year, at the end of the new year. Take those out and remember all you've been grateful for. Then you can say, I've been, I have been more grateful this past year than I was last year. Work on um, finding those things that you are grateful for. So there is obstacles, right? We, what gets in the way of us really being grateful for things? We would be remiss if we did not touch on the obstacles. We may encounter on our gratitude journey. Ralph Waldo Emerson tells us five great enemies to peace inhabit us. Avarious, ambition, envy, anger, and pride. So why do people have trouble feeling gratitude or grateful? Oftentimes it's, it's hard to acknowledge what we do have. We are so busy, we, we lack, we take for granted what we do have. We often find ourselves running from one thing to the next without realizing all the things we already have. What if we stopped and really just focused on what we really do have? Giving ourselves permission to slow down and become more present invites us to really appreciate all we have, which gives us much joy. This place of presence can also mean a gateway to sadness as well. As much as we want love, acknowledgement, happiness, and generosity, it can become very difficult to accept it because it opens us up to being vulnerable to our deeper needs. The other, option, the other obstacle in gratitude is it reminds us what we lacked in the past. You may think getting something we want after not having it for so long would make us even more grateful. And this is partly true. However, we may also face challenges in accepting love or generosity and expressing gratitude when we experience something that is so different from what we have been used to, especially in our childhood. Oftentimes, my clients will have a hard time accepting somebody's genuine, authentic love because it feels peaceful and peace to them feels different. And it's difficult for them to sit with that peaceful feeling of knowing that somebody authentically loves them. And so I have to help them sit with that and really acknowledge that that's what authentic love feels like. So as you see, there are obstacles to feeling grateful. 
So whose hand are you grateful for? I'm gonna to try to do the sharing again. This is another um, video that I really liked. I'm gonna to try to share it. I think I can do this. Um, just gonna stop share here for a minute. Then I'm gonna share. Today, boys and girls, we're going to take a few minutes and draw on the pieces of paper in front of you something or someone you are grateful for. Taking the time for gratitude is so important for our peace of mind and our happiness. And it's a great way to remind ourselves how lucky we are for what we have and who we have in our lives. Afterwards, we're going to share what we've drawn with the rest of the class. Let's begin. class now who would like to come up first and share what you're grateful for me yes Sarah come on up I'm thankful for treats because they give me oxygen <laughs> that's wonderful Sarah thank you so much who would like to go next I'll go Jason come on up I go my parents because without them, I wouldn't even be here. <laughs> and also they help me with my homework and I love them. Chocolate, I'm grateful <laughs> for chocolate. Okay, Rebecca, thank you. Simon, why don't you come up and share with the class what you're grateful for? Come on up, Simon. I'll be right up here with you. <laughs> what are you grateful for, Simon? How would you like to play a game with your classmates to see who can guess whose hand you drew? Would you like that? All right, class, can anyone guess whose hand Simon drew? I think it's the hand of a policeman because they protect us and keep us safe. I think it's Simon's hand because he's grateful to have a hand. <laughs> Is it the hand of God? It's your hand, Miss Sanders. are you grateful for? Who's helped you along in your life? Think about those hands that help you carry your groceries from your car to your house or the ones that pack your groceries. Think about the little hands of grandchildren or children 
each of those we can be grateful for. And I'm grateful that I had the opportunity to share this time with you and to share my love for gratitude with you. But I want to take this time now to open up to questions if anybody has any questions for me. First asked to do this gratitude. I wanted to do it on November 1st because my month of November is the, the month of gratitude. And each day I write down who I'm grateful for and then I send out a, a message, whether it's a message to Facebook or an email just saying I'm grateful for you today. Um, but then I thought about this is November 30th and we've got 24 days before the holiday and we've got different days be before different holidays and it's an opportunity for us to set some new goals to look beyond those things that drain our en energy and look to gratitude to um, nurture that inner soul that desires to, to be at peace and to slow our lives down to appreciate what we do have. And I liked how one of those quotes says, it's not about what we have monetarily. It's what we have inside of us, that inner awareness of the, the riches we have inside of us. So I hope that you had a great, some takeaways that you can use for the holidays to um, just, and, and how positioning ourselves with gratitude can have a ripple effect on who we interact with throughout these holiday seasons. That was wonderful. Thank you so much, Nancy. I know I'm certainly grateful for you donating your time and your expertise to us. So thank you very much. Yes, you're welcome. I, I, it's my honor. So yeah. thank you. Yeah. And I'm also grateful for our Monday morning at Maine community. Thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, this is our last program of the winter session. So we will be wrapping up and then starting back up again in February. So please feel free to email me if you have any program ideas between now and then. Uh, my email is hmiller at lacrosselibrary.org. I'd love to hear from you. And in the meantime, we hope you all stay safe, be well, and have a happy holiday season and take good care. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.